So we built our house in the middle of 11 and a half acres. It's pretty secluded, don't really have any neighbors. We have a grid tie system, 7.6 kilowatts. I absolutely love it out here in the middle of the country. I have my chickens, I have my garden. Uh, we eat a lot of uh, vegetables from the garden. Of course, our own eggs and chickens. I have deer, turkey. This is actually just paradise. But let me show you a little more about my solar array. So I have 24 solar panels, 325 watts each. I have uh, two strings of 12. String one, these two. The next two rows, string two. They're in uh, series. And then I have them going parallel together up to the uh, solar edge inverter up there on the wall. I'll show you that in just a little bit. I have one at the very top, Let's see if I can zoom in. I have a electrical wire. It's actually a grounding wire, copper grounding wire. I don't think you can see it. That's what's grounding all of them together. One of the things I like about the Solar Edge product with the power optimizers, uh, should one of these panels get shaded, then the power optimizers boost up all the other panels to make up for that loss. And at the time of this recording, Emphase couldn't do that. If one panel gets uh, shaded, then that whole strings down. I have two strings here. I want, them, I want these things going as much as I possibly can have them going. And so that was one of the selling points. I've had this unit for two and a half years. I haven't had one problem with it yet. So we come all the way down to the end. You have four wires, a negative and positive. Right here. And down through here. I don't know which one's negative and which one's positive, but there's your four. And that green's the grounding wire. Goes down to that conduit. Uh, the grounding wire is not in the conduit, it's separate. Then it runs all the way up to the solar edge inverter, which is on this wall up there. We'll walk up there real quick. These posts are Mid Carolina's co op. You can buy them, put a bid in on them, first Monday or second Monday of each month. I got them for like $7 each. Nice telephone post, still got good life to them. And uh, they're buried four feet in the ground. Two bags of 80 pound concrete in each one of them. So if you can get a look at this. I make my own hurricane straps right here. Comes up and over, of course. Three bolts on this side and three bolts on that side. I have a strap right here that clamps down on that conduit and then it's bolted and then I have three inch bolts going into the post there. This is galvanized 16, I think, uh, six, grade 16 I believe it is, the thickness of it. And um, it's pretty steady. It's not. It's not what you buy at Lowe's. This actually came from a company that was going out of business and I got them for free. The railings you see uh, did come with the kit. Um, they were supposed to go on the roof, but I made them work out here since they were included in the project kit. You have the inverter to shut off to the panels. That first, not that telephone crap, but the first conduit going down actually runs over underground and up to the solar panels. So from the solar panels, it comes in DC and into the inverter. And the inverter switches it over or inverts it to AC, which follows that line into that shutoff. And that goes to the main breaker panel in the house. And then from the main breaker panel, whatever we're not using during daylight, is fed to the uh, net meter. This is the model they had two and a half years ago. Let's see if I can focus in here. There you go. So it looks like, there you go, 5,560 watts. Volts from the panels are 380 roughly. That's um, DC. And then the volts to the house 251 volts AC
Oop. Put it back on here. There you go. And it's saying all my 24 or 24 modules are communicating really well. And like I said, from here it goes into the main shut off in case of fire or whatever they need. If you need to shut it off, this is it. Feeds the main panel in the house from the main panel, comes back out right here. If I can get the glare off of it. Woo. And it is making solar. Hope that's showing up. It is feeding the grid right now, 250 volts. All right, so inside the house, here's what we have. We have a main breaker panel and a sub panel below it. When the sun's out and I'm generating electricity, it comes in that sub panel first and feeds the well if the well's on. The rest of the electricity runs up to the main breaker panel via that 40 amp at the top right. It feeds anything the house is in demanding electricity for, lights, air conditioner, which is running right now. So all that I'm running in the house currently, because the sun's out, is electricity I generate. Now I'm not using all the electricity I generate, so it feeds backwards to the grid through this 200 amp breaker. A 200 amp breaker is actually just connected out to the net meter and from the net meter it goes through the infrastructure um, and feeds neighbors or whoever else needs electricity. I get a credit from the co-op for whatever electricity I sell them in essence if you want to say sell. At night time or cloudy days when I need electricity I'm not making it. I use uh, the grid's electricity but instead of paying for it, they use my credits first. If I don't have enough credits, then yes, I have an electric bill. But I generate enough electricity that I have a bank of credits. Um, I don't get paid. Some co-ops pay at the end of the year for your leftover credits. Mine just roll over and collect. And that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know, hit the likes button.